Now 92, Silvana Sisiagi suffers from sciatic nerve pain and is unable to sit on a chair. Isiagi was a member of the first parliament, the Legislative Council, and the second one, the National Assembly, representing Bukedea County. The former teacher played key roles in organizing events that saw Uganda claim its independence from Britain. I served to choose our flag, our national anthem, our coat of arms and the rest of them. Teswarujen chose Isiagi to compose a tune for the national anthem. Among the 40 proposals, that tune made it to the short list of six. And when the time came to choose the best tune for Uganda, Isiagi voted for the current anthem. I thought our present national anthem was the best among the six. Uganda National Congress was one of the first political parties in Uganda. According to Siagi, the way it was run displeased some members and so it split into two wings, the Uganda National Congress led by Dr. Milton Obote and Uganda People's Union, which was vibrant in western Uganda. But when the country prepared for self-rule, Obote advocated for unity because he did not want the British to live a divided Uganda. He went to the western region to approach leaders of the Uganda People's Union to seek a merger. And it was successful. So Uganda People's Congress was born. And Obote was elected president of that new party. The events of 9th October 1962 are still fresh in his memory. You know, this is where sometimes the happiness turns into some kind of sorrow. So there are mixed reactions. But the sum total of the whole thing was great happiness. Obote appointed him deputy minister for regional administrations, a docket he occupied until the coup by Idi Amin in 1971. On that day, he had returned home tired from a tour of Kigezi, and as he rested, his wife had gunshots and woke him up. I told her, that what I had predicted all along, as I had told her, had probably come to pass. I put my head back on my pillow until morning when we heard on the radio that there was a military coup. All former ministers were directed to stay in the capital and continue to work. After one week, I mean, summoned the ministers to Parliament House. I think he just wanted to view them and have a bit of gloating. <laughs> After that meeting, the ministers were given transport to return to their villages. While some fled to exile, Isiagi returned to his family. But I took to a lot of hiding. I would break my cover. When advisors said, he remained in hiding until Amin was toppled in 1979. I saw Amin coming to my place. I thought I was now being arrested. They said, Musa Isiag will come to deliver you to your home because Amin's regime is no more. In the Obote II government, Isiag was appointed the chairman of the Lint Marketing Board until another coup happened. Tito was now in the government. So I was told I was chairman no more. <laughs> so Uganda was now characterized with the coups, military coups. The former minister has his views on retirement. At least in Africa, retirement doesn't reflect itself to be an honorable thing. Isiagi says rampant corruption in the country has become a culture because nobody is concerned and he wants government to toughen up and fight it. What I would do, you face sentence in prison, you replace the money, you pay double what you've stolen. 
He also blames this corruption for forcing many Ugandans to live in poverty. Economically, we are seeing the parade, the economic parade of progress passing us by. As we sit, we live along the shores of life. Isiagi has written a hymn book which he is translating into Ateso before it can be written in other languages. Agnes Nandito, NTV, Living History.